Hi everyone, I'm Luis Ortega for PCR Online and Euro Intervention. And today we have the pleasure to interview Dr. Rafael Romaguera for the Belvice University Hospital in Barcelona, Catalonia. Uh, he is the one of the co-PIs of one of the late breaking clinical trials that will be presented in TCT 2021 as a late breaking clinical trial is the SUGAR trial, a trial in which they're comparing two different uh, platforms from new generation drug eluting stents in an all commerce design for by diabetic patients. So Dr. Romaguera, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, my first question uh, regarding this important trial that has been highlighted in the, by the organizers of the meeting is which is the background? How, uh, which is the hypothesis or the, the previous data that lead us to this important trial in clinical practice? Thank you, Luis. Thank you for the invitation and for the presentation. Um, Diabetic patients are more than uh, nearly 500 million all over the world. And we know that many of them have coronary artery disease. Uh, in the United States, 38% of PCI uh, are performing patients with diabetes. And results are far from good with the contemporary drug eluting stent. Despite this, there is an absolute lack of uh, randomized trials comparing new devices and the research is scanty. There is only subgroup analysis and indirect comparisons. So uh, despite being uh, nearly 40% of patients undergoing PCI, uh, there is no, no, no evidence supporting one on other uh, device. Back in 2015, we did a small randomized trial comparing this new device, which is a polymer-free stand that has laser duct wells on the abluminal surface. And it's different from the other devices because a uh, polymer-based DS, the polymer acts as a, as a matrix, and then it only really uh, allows the release of a single molecule. If you have a big molecule and a small molecule, the, the, the speed of release will be different for both molecules. So with this device that we have in laser duct wells, we could uh, formulate or mix the drug with a carrier, which is the case. So the drug, which is sirolimus, is formulated with an amphiphilic carrier. An amphiphilic carrier is a, a molecule that has both, both a hydrophilic and lipophilic bonds. So the, the drug diffusion in most tissues that use this technology is increased and is improved. So the, the drug availability is more homogeneous along the patient world. This is especially important for patients with diabetes because First, they have a uh, drug resistant. This is very well, uh, well known. So they need higher uh, drug concentrations within the tissue. Uh, and second, because they have diffuse disease, they have plaque, then calcium, then plaque, then calcium, and the drug diffusion is not homogeneous across the vessel wall. So when we did this trial, the reservoir trial in 2015, we compare uh, this new stand, which is created with science, and we saw by ANGEL and OCT that uh, the efficacy of the stand was very high. But of course, this was only a mechanistic trial. So then uh, we designed uh, the SUGAR trial, which is a randomized trial comparing this new device with a contemporary drug eluting stand, polymer based. And we, uh, we did a study with all commerce designs because first, there are no randomized trials comparing DS in diabetes and uh, new, new generation DS. And second, the very small evidence came from uh, very selected patients. So for this trial, this is the first trial that allows every single diabetic patient uh, to be included. So left main, multivessel, rotablation, uh, ST elevation, myocardial infarction, uh, more uh, truly the uh, population of patients with diabetes. Okay, I re really, I'm really happy and, and less because you let us know the, all the steps that you follow up uh, until the development of this important trial. And, and I think this is important, you know, for all the, the viewers in PCR online that they know the basis that lead us to this uh, trial. 
Uh, I am I am also very uh, excited about you know the design of all commerce. You we are not to use of all commerce designs for diabetic population. Diabetic population probably is more prone to do you know uh, medication trials than device trials, and especially uh, drug gluten stain trials. So congratulations for that. Uh, having said that, uh, could you walk us to the to the methods of the of the and the design of the study? Of course. So this study is an investigator in NHS trial that was exclusively found by the uh, scientific society, the Spanish Society of uh, Cardiology. And uh, we did a randomized one versus one uh, compared to the Resolutonix Totarolimus lutein stem without any stratification by center, by any other clinical factor. Uh, randomization was performed after the wire uh, crossed the, successfully the target lesion by the, the cath lab staff. And the study has a non-inferiority design, meaning that uh, we, uh, it was power for non-inferiority at one year, and it also had power to look for superiority at two years, because we thought that the target lesion revascularizations will uh, still occur from year one to two. However, we include a pre-specified superiority analysis at one year if non-inferiority was met. The primary endpoint was target lesion failure, as uh, typically defined, uh, cardiac death, the composite of cardiac death, target vessel MI, or uh, TLR, target lesion revascularization. Uh, the myocardial infarction definition we used was the third definition because it was the definition uh, that was available when we designed the study and the clinical ethics committee approved the study. But after that, we also include uh, secondary uh, assessments with other definitions, such as the uh, uh, Academic Research Consortium uh, definition. Okay. And, 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 and we are waiting for this moment. We share the results of the trial. So uh, uh, let us know what uh, you found in this important trial. Thank you, Luis. Thank you. So we randomized 1,175 patients all with diabetes, mostly type 2 diabetes. 586 were randomized to Creativo and 589 to Resolutonix. There were only nine patients lost to follow-up, so the, uh, the follow-up at one year uh, was extremely good. Uh, the clinical baseline characteristics between both groups were very similar. There were nearly 50% multi-vessel disease, also, the syntax score tertile uh, was, uh, in, uh, for most patients, was in the lower tertile, meaning that uh, all centers uh, were uh, treating the patients according to the, according to the current guidelines. 12% uh, of ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, 3% uh, of left main PCI, 3% uh, of chronic total occlusion PCI, 4% uh, to 5% of bifurcations with two stents, uh, much more bifurcations, but 5% uh, uh, with, with two stents. And uh, what we saw at one year was that target lesion failure, the primary point, occurred in 10.9% of patients uh, randomized to Resolutonix and 7.2% to Creative. So the difference was 3.7% less for Creativo, meaning that the non-inferiority was met. And in the pre-specified superiority analysis, the Creativo was superior to Resolutonix stem, reducing by 35% the risk of target lesion failure at one year. For the secondary endpoints, uh, the individual components of the primary endpoint uh, were not significantly different except for TLR that uh, the risk reduction uh, achieved nearly uh, a statistical significance with a p-value of 0 0.058. So the, mostly the primary point was driven by a, by a reduction of target lesion revascularization. Other secondary points, uh, there was also a significant reduction of target visual failure. And for the patient-oriented uh, maze, uh, the, the reduction was nearly significant as well.
Okay, okay. So great results, great results. All, all, all things go in the correct direction, I, I suppose, no? I, I guess. Yes, yes. Um, we expected, as we designed, uh, to, uh, to find non-inferiority at one year, of course, but uh, we were slightly surprised when we saw that the risk reduction was, was so, so high at one year. Okay, okay. And then come also an important question because you know trials should uh, impact the care of patients. Uh, with all the PCR and all these trials are dedicated to improve patients' mm -hmm. outcomes. So how can you summarize this six years work? Because you you begin in 2015, we are in 2021, almost 2022. So a lot of work. How do you believe your work impact the clinical practice uh, from this point to beyond? So what, what, we, sh what we should change in, in our clinical practice based on the sure trial results? The first thing that <clears throat> I would like to change is the research. As I said, there are 500 million people worldwide with diabetes and there are, uh, as you said, uh, drug trials, but there are no device trials. So the first like I would like to, to change with the sugar is an increase in the research in the diabetes field for interventional cardiology. And then for the clinical practice, uh, we have proven that the Creativo is a good device uh, for these patients. I think that the results are very good. Uh, of course, we cannot compare this stand to the all uh, avail uh, clinic, uh, available uh, devices. But uh, I think that uh, this, this device uh, may be considered for many patients with diabetes mellitus. Of course, uh, we, we, there are not enough evidence for more complex patients or with uh, multivessel disease, a very high syntax score, and uh, STEMI patients were only 12%. But I think that this is then, uh, may be considered as a very good strategy for these patients. And it is also very important uh, to consider the patient as a whole, the patient with diabetes. Not only is important the, the stand you choose, it is very important that the patient then is discharged if it's acute coronary syndrome with a new P2Y12 uh, to follow the guidelines and to use uh, sodium glucose co-transporter inhibitors, uh, to mm, be very strict with work, uh, weight reduction and everything else. So we have to consider the patient with diabetes as a whole. We cannot implant the stent and then uh, don't follow the patient and, because all other things are uh, even more important. I fully agree. You know, diabetic patients are complex patients and they require a complex approach to, to bring them a whole... A, a, a complete uh, strategy of medication, implantation of new devices that have a proven as the decade ago uh, that they are at least better than a workhorse. And I, I would want to point out that that is true. And that was one of my comments that uh, in this trial, we are really comparing one stand versus another. So we cannot you know, extrapolate the results to all the FDA or CEMR uh, uh, approved stands. But we can all agree that uh, Onyx is a very juicy stent and very good one. So at least you put a very high bar to, to in, in your trial. And that's an important point because you, uh, an operator should select uh, the, the, the stents with the, what they have in, in their catalogs also. And also I want to, to highlight uh, this, this is was an old commerce and you mentioned left mains PCI, you, left, you mentioned total chronic occlusion, rotablator, in, in this in intervention. So they, 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 I believe it truly uh, resembles what we look in, in clinical practice with uh, patients with diabetics are complex patients with complex PCI. And I, I am I, I'm really uh, surprised by, by, by of the results because you get a very pretty good results in very complex patients. And this is something I, sh I, I should highlight and congratulate the investigators on, on, on this point. Uh, I have a, a few short questions. I, I also I always make this type of questions because I, I like them. Why you are working on uh, on this <clears throat> research? Because you are doing uh, research in diabetes. Not not it's not your first trial in this one. You have a, a pathway uh, in these years in, in this uh, research line. So what were you planning with the sugar trial? What you will do about diabetes in the future as as a researcher? Uh as you said, uh, Luis, uh, we have a research line that is very clear. 
and it is to improve outcomes in patients with diabetes. So the first thing that we have to do is to wait for the two years follow-up, which is the, 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 the design has superiority analysis at two years. We have to wait because patients, I think, will have uh, many events from year one to two years. Then we have a very nice data. We have to dive in the database because as I told you, we have to see the role of sodium glucose co-transport inhibitors in our patients. We have to see the difference in performance between both stents in multivessel disease. And of course, we are currently working in the sugar to trial. <laughs> I cannot give you more details, but we will keep this direction. <laughs> Okay, okay, so we have a glimpse into the future. I always like this for the interviews for PCR online because we are ahead of the, of the other people. So I, I want to congratulate the, the investigators uh, for these great results. I, I wanna ask you if there will be a simultaneous publication of the data, if, if there will be. Yes, uh, Luis, thank you for the question. Uh, I'm very happy to say that there will be a simultaneous publication at European Heurlon Journal uh, online during the live presentation. Okay, so all, for all the viewers of PCR online, you can also, after looking the interview, you can go to the, to the European Heart Journal website and you can download the, I, I believe you comment it was open access also? Yes, we push uh, to our founder, to the Spanish Society of Cardiology. Uh, so so the, the publication will be open access. So it will be available for everyone. So everyone could look at, 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 at the, the paper and they could drive their own conclusions. But I, I, I could say that at least for what you have presented, we have to highlight also that, as you correctly mentioned in the interview, this is not an interim analysis, a specified analysis, but we have to wait for the two years uh, follow up so we can have the complete uh, data of the of, of the trial and I, I think uh, correct me if, if I am missed it the, the, the complete follow up of the trial will be up to uh, five years yes uh, we will finish the two years follow up in late January of 2022 so very soon and the complete follow up uh, is scheduled for five years Okay, okay, so we will have a long term follow up, which is always good in diabetic patients. Yes, yes, it's very important for patients with diabetes. I think the first uh, two years are very important for target lesion for, for target lesions. And then from two years to five years, I think that mm, most of the events, nearly 80% will see in another in another points. Okay, okay, so Dr. Romaguera, nice, a nice interview. Many thanks for having us. We have the pressure to interview you for PCR online. So for all the viewers of PCR online and all the readers of Peru Intervention, we are very happy to deliver again another uh, interview with the PI of the trial, late in clinical trials. Congratulations again at PCT 2021. And it was, as I mentioned, remarked by the organizers of the meeting as one of the three best trials Performs, uh, presented in, in this meeting. So congratulations again. And for all the people seeing us, many thanks for, for your attention and enjoy the meeting. We will keep up tones with us because we will have a lot of interviews you can saw in Twitter or in the webpage of PCR Online that I will follow at least, I, I can be incorrect, but I believe it's 10 to 15 trials. So a lot of, of, of information going on from PCR Online. So bye-bye and have a good day. Bye-bye, see you soon.